one who owns you. The one who determines what will happen in your life the next minute. If you know you have come to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, let him hear you. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. He needs to hear your voice. The song may be over, but your song can begin now. The song may be over, but he wants to hear your own song. He knows your voice. Hey, Yarabo Shatalahaya. We bless you this day. What an honor and privilege to join the host of heaven to sing unto your name. What a joy to belong to the King of Kings, to bow before you in worship. We love you, Lord. We love you, our Father. You are all that matters, Lord. You come first in our lives. You mean everything to us, oh God. Without you, life will be devoid of meaning. Without you, we will have no reason to go on. Even in our weaknesses, you love us. And today, we have come to pour our love on you. We say no God comes first. Every other God, they are the works of men. But you are the only living God. And we choose to serve you. What an honor and privilege to be called children of the living God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I love you, Jesus. Somebody say, I bless you, my father. Somebody say, you own me, Lord. You own me, Lord. I don't belong to any shrine. I belong to the king of kings. God without reservation in this service today and you will have a destiny shift. 2024 is our covenant year of the shepherd. Remember to pray Psalms 23 every day. Connect with our man of God on the altar of mercy prayers every Monday to Friday 11 p.m. to 12 15 a.m. on radio, TV and social media. Also download ICT, the Gateway Connect app we for your daily updates and follow all our social media platforms. ICT please can we pause? As the video is not playing, we sincerely apologize for this little mix-up. It's showing over there. Okay, please, let's carry on with the video. We were not seeing it over here. Please go ahead. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are you not happy with God? I said hallelujah. Maybe we should carry on with the power seat presentation. It is on behalf of the lead pastor and co-pastor, George Emanuela Izuma, that I want to happily welcome everyone to this service once again. Can we put our hands together to our God? If you are really excited to be here this morning, go ahead and jump those hands together for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. My name is Pastor Acha Dixon. I'm a business person out there. I'm a retired banker and currently serving as the CEO of Gale Republic. Hallelujah. In the church here, I serve as the assistant resident pastor for U40. U40, we are meeting immediately after this service, okay? If you're a young person within the ages of 20 and 40, please ensure that you are a part of the next service. And today we are talking about this Japa stuff. In case you have anybody who has been pushing you or somebody who is contemplating, please call the person, person who wants to travel abroad for any reasons. Maybe he has some fear, some clarification he or she needs to make. Please invite the person to be a part of the next service. Our lead pastor will be ministering in that service. Hallelujah. 
I have two assignments basically here. Number one is to take us through our power seed, and then we take our covenant confession together. But before we delve into that, um, I'm asked to announce to us that those beneficiaries to the market draw, if you're a beneficiary to the market draw that was done at market, uh, my three market, my four, please go over to testimony unit. Someone will be attending to you there. If you're one of those who participated in the market draw at my four, please go over to the testimony unit. Someone will attend to you there. It's very important that you do that now. And then the George Izuma Tournament Cup has already begun. If you're interested in registering, please go ahead and register. If uh, you are interested in chairing those that have registered or your team is participating, please ensure that you come here every Saturday, beginning from this Saturday, going forward until our family fun week. The football game will be happening here. Hallelujah. Pass it time. Hallelujah. The topic for today's pass it is you will give an account. Say to your neighbor, you will give an account. And our key text is taken from the book of Romans chapter 14, verse 11 to 12, rendering from the King James Version. It says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Listen to the following commentary. It says, in the actualization of pursuit, the how is as important or even far more important than the why. That is why the Bible emphasizes in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Meaning that while it is necessary to prosper on earth, how you go about the pursuit of your dreams and aspirations matter to God. Also, how you steward the resources God has given to you will be taken into account. Continually bear in mind that someday, after all is said and done, you will give an account of yourself to God. So, decide now what that account will be. You will be given an account of the following. If you received Jesus or ignored and mocked him, and whether you lived a life that is pleasing to God or not, you will give an account of how you, you used your gifts and talents to fulfill God's purpose for your life. You will also give an account of your service and labor in God's kingdom. How you manage God's kingdom resources is one of those accounts you will also give. Make sure you are prepared. Tell your neighbor, make sure you are prepared. Hallelujah. Please, can you lift up your right hand and say with me, it's a prayer. Say, Father, I thank you for your word today. Help me to live prepared for that day in Jesus' name. There's an action point. It says, let go of every besetting sin in your life. Get rid of your distractions. Tell your neighbor, get rid of your distractions. Be serious. Focus. Get rid of your distractions. Be serious. Focus. Hallelujah. As it is our custom, you will lift your right hand once again as we take our Rohi Covenant Confession. It will be on the screen, and you go with me. If you're too fast, if you're taking it after me, you're too late. If you're before me, you're too fast. So, are we ready? One to go. I confess that God is a good God. He is my source. He is taking good care of me. My life is sustained by his covenants. Today, Standing on Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. I affirm that Jesus Christ is my Lord. He died and rose from the dead. His sacrifice paid the price for all my sins. He is in heaven now, but his Holy Spirit lives in me. Jesus is my life. I live by his word. I am led by his spirit. I believe that in him and through him, 
I am a member of the family of God. And very soon, he will come back to take me home. Because of Jesus Christ, I am blessed of God. My DNA is supernatural. I walk in prosperity. I create my dreams. I find favor everywhere. Kings come to the brightness of my rising. Nations open their gates to me and treasures to me. I cannot fail. Nothing dies in my hands. No power can hurt my destiny. Goodness and mercy follow me at all times. On my path, there is no sickness nor death. This year, 2024, I received the covenant of Rohi. The Lord is my shepherd. Gateway International Church is my spiritual family. I put God first. I pay my tithes. I am a soul winner. I serve in God's kingdom. My life works. My faith works. My relationships work. My business works. Everything works. My covenant place is at the topmost stop. Every promise and prophecy of 2024 will be fulfilled in my life. There shall be no loss nor evil report in my life this year. Only good things are permitted in my life. Say it once again. Only good things are permitted in my life. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hallelujah. If you believe that God is your source, can you wave your hands to him? If you know he's your source, you know he fights your battles for you. You know you are victorious. Wave your hands to Jesus wherever you are. Wave your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah.
him, give him the praise, celebrate him. He's enough in your life. Praise the Lord. My name is Adi Lamokuma Uche. I want to return all the glory to God for his faithfulness. Uh, on 12th of February, Papa was uh, praying on the altar of mercy, and someone, I think in Dubai, said, sent a message that he's believing God for a turnaround. And Papa, Papa said, if you are with your credit card and you have any currency around, lift it up and pray. I did that. I keep to that. And from, since that day to today, I've been experiencing a financial shift. Praise God. The second one is uh, on the 6th of March, God helped my wife and she delivered safely a bouncy baby girl. Even when there was a life threatening situation of the baby, the baby is sound, the mommy is, is sound. And there is something important that happened that day. Two weeks before the delivery, I was having issues with my ear. I took antibiotics and some medications. The old pain stopped, but my e right ear was still blocked. But right in the delivery room, while we were praying, immediately the baby came out, my ear opened. Can you do better than you are doing? Honor Jesus. Church, praise the Lord. This thing really works. Mrs. Patricia Comfort Wonder is here to thank God. Adolphus is here to thank God that this thing works. She said yesterday's night she was going home. She entered a minibus from St. John's going to Iwafe. Just close to Lifeford, still on that road. She said the Spirit of God told her to pray. And then she said praying, Father, take charge of this journey. Whatever is going to happen, just lead us home safely. A few seconds before she, just after she finished muttering the prayer, what they heard was a clash from behind. Boom. There was a, a tipper in front. There was a tanker in front of them. When the vehicle hits them from behind, he hits them and ran off. Their driver was chuckling, trying to avoid the tanker, and then he veered off into the other side of the road. But to the glory of the God, no vehicle was coming. She was seated by the door with her son. With all the struggling, trying to regain control of the vehicle, she didn't follow up. Her son didn't follow up. There was no scratch. There was no hurt. She's hale and hearty. She's here to thank God. You will not suffer loss. Miss Ishmael Lakudo Esther is here to thank God for the life of her elder brother. She said last year, the girl he was supposed to get married to had an abortion and died. They didn't know why she did that, even if he had already they already had plans of going to pay her bride price and all. But they didn't know what prompted that decision. She went ahead, did it, and she died. So when she died, the brother was arrested. He was kept in prison for months before the girl's parents came. Oh, you killed our daughter for a year. The girl's parents came and said, you killed our daughter. We are going to take the case to court. It was as if it was taken to court and abandoned. There were no court sessions, nothing. The boy was just in prison. She said she met Pastor Favor during Jericho March yesterday. He prayed with her. And then all through January to please God, that was her first prayer point. Altar of Mercy, she's been praying. So he said sometime last week or two weeks ago, she came to Altar of Mercy, packed sand, went to her elder brother's room at home. And poured the sand, and she said she's invoking the mercy of God, the altar, the covenant that works on this altar to work for her brother. Let the mercy of God speak for her brother and let him be found and let him come back. She said last week she got a call. They called her that her brother came back. They didn't know what happened. The boy just came back. And when they asked him what happened, he said the guard, the warden just came and met him and said, Your presence in this place has been tormenting us for some days. Just get out, get out. And that was how they released her brother. Charges were dropped. She's just here to give God all the praise. Are you just keeping quiet? Give the Lord a shout. Lift your hand and thank him. Open your mouth and bless him. He is a covenant keeping God. Can you lift your hand and pray in the Holy Ghost? Thank him that God can fight for you. God can defend you. When I say lift your hands, lift your hands. Open your mouth and begin to talk to your king. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is praise. I 
sing praises to you. Lift your voice and sing to him now. Oh, Lord. Only one that sits in the throne. Praises to your name. Towards heaven and worship Jesus. He alone deserves our praises. In Karababa For your name is great. For his name is holy. His name is holy. His name is holy. His name is holy. Lord of trumpet.
lift up your voice. The one who gave his yes. life for me. Could your hands go I up? Raise the I raise the banner. Now of his name. His name. Until. Until. Take it again, I come before I everywhere. I come before my Lord. Lift your hands and wave it to him. The champion of the host table. You are the one we bow to. You are the God we come to. Receive all the worship. And everyone shout Amen. Wave your hands above your head. Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for the answers we have seen in you. And thank you for greater testimonies we will see. Everybody lift your hand and shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up the hand I speak over you today. That you are being in this third service. The Lord command a new dimension of glory. The Lord command answers. You have been waiting for a long time. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to know. He's my shepherd. Can you lift those two hands. Third service and scream like thunder. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Say it again like you mean. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Open your mouth and insist on that. It's your covenant of the year. I shall not want The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want I will never want anything. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want
cow poison a physical. I lift up my hand over it. Any area of your life where exchange of destiny is happening. Today, let that exchange be reversed. So he says she joined Gateway. In the midst of joining the church. While we are fasting. Her birthday is approaching. The man appeared. She said there was a young girl that was appeared before her also when the man appeared. The man brought the gifts. The girl brought a paper. She looked at the paper. It was a Bible.
Jesus are doing them. We do things because of our revelations of God. Are you with me? It doesn't matter which church on earth doing anything. I will never do it unless God gives me an instruction and a revelation. Now, there's a pattern in the scripture concerning Peniel. And that's what we are following. The trench of that 31 verse 11. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Verse 12. Gather the people together. Do what? Men and women and children and thy strength that which, stranger which is within thy gates that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this. So he said, gather them, all the men, all the women, all the strangers, let them be there so you can speak to them. Now, when Moses was writing this, are you guys okay? Don't forget at that time, when they entered into Canaan, they divided the nation into tribes, right? Judah is here. Benjamin is here. And uh, uh, Ephraim is here. And uh, Asher is there. Everybody has their own cities. Are you with me? I'm sure you know that time there was no phone. There was no TV. There was no internet. Are you
as we prepare for penny and show us help. We give you the glory. And every Christian here shout amen. amen. Shake three persons hand as you get seated. Hallelujah. Can you lift your right hand and shout, I am gateway? Say 10%. Okay, now let me start with something very practical. Are you with me? Not everybody without cash is poor. Your business is down, but I stand as one sent by God. Before this year is over, 
you will see business revival. You will see career upsurge. If I hear your amen, you take your portion. Listen, it is not destiny that makes a man. It is the man that makes his destiny. It is who you are that subdues the world around you. Are you with me? Some of you came from places where they say, let me check your hand. What is written in the palm of your hand? Akaraka. They say it doesn't fail. That's a lie. There's nothing like that. The man reading your palm is a fool and you, his reading his palm is fuller. No, you are not hearing me. If you have my voice, say yes. There's nothing like that. Listen, in the kingdom where we belong to, our understanding of destiny is different from that of other religions. In other religions, they tell you that your destiny is decided by God. In this, in where we belong to, everyone's destiny is a proposal. God said, this is my plan for you. If you partner with me, we can work it out. If you don't partner with me, we won't work it out. And to the extent your partner is to the extent we work out. That's what the Bible teaches. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? That's why some people get concerned. But somebody prophesied over me and the prophecy didn't happen. Listen to me. Except a prophecy that has eternal significance. Every other prophecy is a partnership. So if I tell you this, what God wants to do in your life, it doesn't mean go and sit on your blessed assurance. It means get ready to walk. He said, by this prophecy, war a good warfare. Are they hearing me? So a lot of people, they get a prophecy, they live a life of stupidity. They go out. It doesn't work. It will not work. Now, you say, what of the, you say the one with eternal significance. Those ones are in the Bible. Those ones are there. It's settled with God. So a person can be the greatest prophet on earth. Lay hands on you, pour all your prophecy. Give you everything God says. And 10 years later, nothing happens because you didn't know there's supposed to be a partnership. That's why people keep running around. Prophet says something. You don't need a prophet to say something. If you do the right thing, you have the right result. <laughs> Lift your hand above your head. I speak over you today. This year will not pass. The world will know that you met God. Yeah. And this takes me to 13. If you meet a man whose source is the supernatural, he will do whatever it takes to keep covenant channels open. If your source is the spirit realm, you will do what it takes to keep everything working. The people that toy with their relationship in the supernatural, they have other things that is powering them. If you help me say yes. Everybody knows where he's drawing from who? They are not hearing me. Uh, I mean, all of us, I went to school now. Hello? You know, we used to say in school, the board game, we're playing. Eh? When somebody is uh, playing and mumuing around, the guy get planned. Are there not people you know that never, never know the enter class, but then they take first? Eh? Don't you see some young girls who are always passing? And they never take note. You are not hearing me. They've never repeated a course before. Because of Boge. Get planned. No, you are not hearing me. I told them a story. I saw it this week. Actually, this week. So, when I, when I was talking, this, it just kept, in the first service, I just remembered the cartoon I saw. A young man with his friend. They finished writing the exam. And the young, the friend is more, this friend is more intelligent than the other guy. He was expecting to at least get something in the paper. They came out. He looked at the paper. I can't remember exactly now whether it's O he got or eight and all that. So he was looking at it very angry. And there is 40 marks. He looked at it very angry. He turned to his friend. His friend was just smiling very broadly. He said, oh boy, I got eight. You whose head is sawdust? How can you be smiling? The friend just was smiling. He brought out his own, showed him. 40 over 40. <laughs> How? He said, when I entered the, the hall and I turned the paper and I didn't understand anything there, 
is I left the paper blank. I just wrote my sister's phone number. I wrote under, this is my sister's phone number. And I know the teacher likes my sister. He got 40 over 40. A boy can get planned now. Come on, are you hearing me? He got it. Uh, I don't know your plan, but I know my plan. My plan is Jehovah. In the school of prosperity, you either get it by labor, or you get it by mysticism, or you get it by blessing. These are the only three channels. Labor, that is human effort. You fight, 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 and you rise. You know, there are people that tell you, there's nothing like blessing. There's nothing. Everybody has to work hard. Sir, please listen. Anybody you see that's on top there, something took him there. You know, you know, some people say, you know, all of these Americans, all of these billionaires, they, 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 they were inspired. Look at Facebook. Look at this. Please look up here. How you know who sponsored them? Check what they use the billions for. Check the rights they fight for. Check the grants they give. Check how they are changing civilization. Check how they are fighting for transgender, lesbianism, and... Uh, no, you are not hearing me. Check how they are attacking Christianity in different levels. You won't need to be told that somebody is paying the bills nobody gets there without help. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Do you know that a big businessman can bring out 50 million now and drop up the video to come and do a concert in Port Harcourt? But that businessman will not bring out 500,000 to give a Christian musician. Can you accept that? Nothing. He will never do If you tell him, say no. No, no, no. Our business doesn't do anything in church. They don't do anything in church. But they do the other one. It's not because of anything. It's because everybody... You're not hearing. Everybody has their source. You labor. There's a level that labor cannot take you beyond. When you get to that point, you have reached your zenith. Only a higher hand can take you there. Either mysticism. That's why some politicians are running around and doing no thing with politicians. They don't know that you get to a certain level. Only heaven or hell can take you. You are not hearing me. The difference is that in Proverbs 10 23, it says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and doesn't ask sorrow. When Satan gives you a shoe, he takes your leg. He gives you a cap, he takes your brain. No, you are not hearing me. But God's blessing adds no sorrow. I lift my hand over you. 2024, you will walk in fullness of blessing. Yeah. Today I'm talking this simply because we are going far. Are you with me? There are many things that activate the blessing. Somebody say the blessing. Yeah. Shouting louder, the blessing. Yeah. You know a lot of people come to church, they say my pastor bless me, but I'm not seeing the result. The main things activate the blessing. The first thing that activates the blessing is meditation on God's word. You study the word, you confess it, you obey it. That's the first thing. There are five things that activate the blessing. Second thing that activates the blessing is being diligent in your business. If you are not diligent in your business, there's no blessing. You must have vision. You must have investment. You must have hard work. You must have networking. It activates the blessing. The third thing that activates the blessing is the force of a fighting spirit. That as a person, you are a fighter. You don't give up. You adventure. Where men enter, you enter. You don't do business by sitting down. You are in Port Harcourt, you go to Abuja, you go to Lagos, you enter this company, you enter the other one. Where they fight, you fight. That's how to become rich. You can't sit in your house and God will bring it to you. Come on, are you hearing me? That's, that's the way to activate the blessing. The fourth way to activate the blessing is kingdom advancement actions that you are going on soul winning. Your house is hosting G12. You are hosting the ark of God. You are running around in kingdom service. You are praying. You are doing intercession. Those things help to activate the blessing. So you see meditation on God's word. Being diligent in business. Fighting spirit. Kingdom advancement action. The fifth thing that activates the blessing is the practice of generosity. Your philanthropy. Your sacrifice. Your sowing and reaping. And importantly, your tithing. 
That's why today we'll be talking to you about the test of the 10%. We'll talk about tithe. Tithe is 10% of your gross earning that you give to God because you are his covenant partner. Can you lift up your right hand and shout, I am a covenant partner? With the almighty God. Third service, can you wake up and do that with a loud voice? I'm a covenant partner. With the almighty God. I want heaven to record your voice. Lift your hand above your head and scream. I am a covenant partner. With the almighty God. So it's your gross earning. You, in your job, they pay you uh, 200,000. And then you do business, you make 200,000. And somebody dash you 100,000. Your tithe is 50,000. 10% of the gross. The 200 plus the 200 plus the 100. Are you with me? It's not from salary. It's from your income. Income. Everything that came in. Are you with me? And I need to catch this. Please listen to me. That's why I say I'm, I'm teaching Simply, this is not looking like Sunday service, looking at Bible study. Please look up here now. Are you with me? In Genesis chapter 14, from verse 18, the Bible says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. Have you been to church before and we are taking communion and bring forth bread and wine? Huh? Yeah. Why? The first place tithe was paid in the Bible. Melchizedek was a high priest, the priest of the Most High God. He brought forth bread and wine. And in the New Testament, Jesus is our Melchizedek. Do you get it? The bread and wine is his communion. And he was a priest of Moses, God, verse 19. And he blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of what? Heaven and earth. I see you possess everything. Amen. Look at verse 20. And blessed be the Most High God, which have delivered thy enemy into your hands. Have God delivered your enemy into your hands? And Abraham gave him what? Tithes of all. He gave him tithes of all. This is the first place tithe was mentioned. Abraham went to war. Somebody say war. war. He had five kings to fight against. He risked his life. He is the one that went to war. Not Melchizedek. He was the one in the battlefield. He risked his life. He finished the battle. He won. He came back with the booty. But as he was going back home, he decided, let me go to the house of this man who is a priest of the Most High God. He got there, checked everything and took one-tenth of it and gave to the man. That was so stupid. That was because he recognized, for me to defeat five kings, only God could have helped me. Come on, are you with me? And the man blessed him. And the Bible said that the person that had the promise now received the covenant. I lift my hand over you. Before you leave this service today, Every promise of God in your life will be activated. Amen. Wake up now. That's what Abraham did. Do you know when Abraham finished that? A few moments later, the king of Sodom came and said, Abraham, thank you for fighting the battle and delivering my family and bringing back our goods. Take all the money. Take all the gold and silver. Just give me my wife and children. Abraham said, no, no, no I won't take anything. Else tomorrow you will say, I am the one that made Abraham rich. Are you with me? Uh, he refused money. He was the one that gave out money and received impartation. Carefully follow me. Today, Sodom is not around. Abraham and his children are still around because blessing outlasts physical things. I lift my hand over you. Oh, third service. Lift up the hand. I decree today. When all that are passed away, your journey will continue. Abraham gave tithes. Now, I'm sure you know that the law came during the time of Moses. Ah? Huh? Ah? Huh? You know, there are some people that their pastor is social media. Their pastor is Mr. Facebook and uh, Reverend YouTube. No, you're not hearing me. So, when Reverend YouTube is speaking, he's a pope. And uh, anything anybody is saying, as long as Pope on YouTube has spoken, Pope, we're not a good church. You are not hearing me. He believes what the Pope has said. So many of you have been listening to your pastor on YouTube, and he said to you, Titan is an Old Testament thing. It's in the law. 
Moses is the one that came with the law. Abraham was before the law. Are you with me? Tithe was paid before the law to a person that's a big God, not of Aaron, not of any of the priests by the law, but a figure of Christ in the New Testament. The Lord has sworn I will not repent. Jesus, you are a priest forever after the order, not of Aaron, but of who? Melchizedek. So God came from the time of grace and transcended the time of grace and established the principle of the 10%. Are you still with me? You need to understand that because a lot of people don't understand the scriptures. I don't want to get into the theology. I've taught that to the pastors. If I get into that, we'll spend too much time because that will get, get into from Ebel until now. Because any principle you see in the Bible, if you don't understand it, a foolish person will argue you out of it. If you help me say yes. So before the law, tithe was an expression of gratitude and honor to God as a partner. Gratitude and honor. That's why you go to Genesis 28 where you meet the man called Joseph. Sorry, called uh, Jacob. And that's the place we took the name Gateway from. You see when Jacob was running away from his brother Esau and came to Bethel, Luz, and he made a vow. Verse 20. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, Everybody look up now. Are you still with me? Follow me. I want to get to this end. He said, if God will be with me, if God will be with me, and will keep me in the way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. Next verse. And so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. This guy is making a deal with God. I am running away from my brother. Things are hard for me. I have no future. God, if you will take me and bring me back, number one, you will be my God. Are you with me? Look at the next verse, verse 22. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. Number two, I will build you a house. Number three. And all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth of it. Number three, I will pay my tithe. Have you met businessmen in church? Politicians in church that are pursuing a major contract. That are looking for political appointment. That are looking for God to give them opportunities of greatness. You know what they do? They come to the altar. They kneel down. They say, God, if you bless me, I will do something. You know why? They don't want to say anything to commit themselves. They want to play with God because God is in, not intelligent enough. Say, if you bless, this man said, number one, I will serve you. Number two, I will build you a house. What is your vow? Number three, I will not eat my tithes. Can you be specific in your vow you're making? If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Can you cut a deed that's specific? God, if, if you do this for me, I will remember you. God, I remember that the last time I did for you, you ate my tithe. Me, I remember you well. Are you still hearing me here? Ted service, are you guys catching what I'm dealing with here? Now, so before the law, it was an issue of gratitude and honor. During the law, it was gazetted into an obligation. It became a command. It became an obligation. Are you with me? That's why you can say in Malachi chapter 3, God says... With a man rob God. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 9. Malachi 3 from verse 9. Malachi 3 from verse 9. He said, okay, from verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet have you robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? In what? Your mouth, no, they open. In what again? There are some people sitting here now. If you go to a police station in heaven, their picture is hanging on the wall. Wanted for robbing God. No, you are not hearing me. They are most wanted. This man has stolen 17 million. We need to prosecute him. May heaven not prosecute you. Look at the next verse. He said, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. See, he, at this point, it has become an obligation. 
If you don't fulfill it, a curse comes upon you. Are you with me? Even this whole nation. Now look at verse 10. He said, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse. I will get to that later. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here we say the Lord, if I won't open the windows of heaven. Somebody lift up your right hand. As you go from today, every closed door of help open forever. Amen. So God said, bring my tithe or else you'll be under a curse. That's in the law. And then after the law, as Jesus appeared to bring in the New Testament, you will think he will say, throw it away. No, he didn't say that. Look at Luke chapter 11, verse 42. Luke eleven forty-two. He said, cast is the Pharisees. Woe to you. But let me read it in the New Living Translation. He said, what sorrow awaits you, Pharisees? He said, you have sorrow. For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your half grains. But you ignore justice and the love of God. Hey, Tell service, are you guys with me? Yeah. Now, anybody heard of the Pharisees before? These are legalists. They follow the law strictly. A Pharisee fasts twice in a week. A Pharisee makes sure that everything Moses says, he obeys it. He doesn't walk on a Saturday. He doesn't take a journey that will make him sweat on a Saturday. He's, he's a, a law person. When a Pharisee wants to tithe, if he got uh, a bunch of, uh, let's say, mangoes, he will throw them on the floor and count all of them and take 10%. He will get his crayfish. He will count them. And No, you're not hearing. That's a Pharisee. Jesus said, you take time to count and to pay tithe of even your herbs in the house. You have all of this curry powder. You cut them and then pay a tithe of them just to show that you are serving God. But you forget the justice of God. You forget the love of God. Now, you will think that Jesus is going to say, no, you are sinners. Look at what he says. Look at the next line. You should tithe. Yes. Did you see that? I'm asking you, did you see that? Jesus said, you should tithe. Yes. But do not neglect the more important things. Justice and the love of God is what Jesus called the important thing. He said, you should tithe, but don't neglect those ones. Oh, third service, you're not catching me. So Jesus didn't say, don't tie it. That man teaching you that. Where the Bible did he read? Lift up your right hand. I speak over you. In the name of the one who died and rose again. By this covenant obedience, your destiny shift. <laughs> Do you know the beautiful thing about Titan? My time is going about eight minutes or so, so let me run. The beautiful thing about Titan is that Titan equalizes us in our approach of God. Somebody say equalizer. Look at it this way. Hello? Hello? A man that planted 100 tubers of yam, another planted 500, another planted 5,000, will they reap the same harvest? One will be bigger. Is that true? That's called sowing and reaping. But in Titan, we don't deal with sowing and reaping. In Titan, we're talking about covenant equality. Look at what Titan is. This man made 10 million. He gave 1 million. He's got 10%. The other one got 100,000. He gave 10,000. It's 10%. This one got 1 million. He gave 100,000. It's 10%. In the platform of blessing, to give everybody an equal playing field, God said, if you bring the tithe, I will pour out a blessing. So there's a level playing field. It's in the seed that things change. That not, is anybody hearing me here today? That's how the kingdom of praise. So the blessing comes upon you equally. Then what you do with your seed determines how much you have as you see. Are you with me? So the poor man and the rich man are blessed equally. I don't think they're catching what I'm doing. <laughs> Lift up your right hand again. It's as I'm talking, I'm blessing you. Are you catching it? Yeah. I speak over you today. Everything not working begins to work. Yeah. So you don't use your tithe to take care of the sick person in the village. You don't use your tithe to help a pastor who is struggling. That's not how the tithe is done. If you help me, say yes. 
You know, in this church, there are some people that come to me. He said, Pastor, uh, I feel like God wants me to bring uh, uh, my tithe to you. And I said, no, 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 you don't do that. No. You pay your tithe to the church. If you have a seed to give, you bring it to me. If you have a sacrifice, you can bring it to me. You can. I don't know if you are getting what I'm talking to. You pay your tithe to where you receive your spiritual food. Into the house of God. It's not a benevolence thing. I do benevolence. I do judge. It's not a foundation. It's not from my tithe. Hello? No. I get up every Saturday. I check my income. I check my bank accounts. Any money people transferred, anything people sent. I check what I got in the week. I take records. And I say, okay, this is how much that came in. This is my tithe. I transfer it because I can't be standing here blessing with cursed hands. And you don't enter your business premises with cursed hands. Don't run your home with cursed hands. If you have my voice, say yes. That's what tithing is all about. That's kingdom privilege of partnership with the most high God. If you have my voice, I hear you, sir. Say like you believe it. I hear you, sir. And tithing is a heart test. Somebody say heart. Say louder, heart. It's a test of your heart. A test of your heart. It's not a law test. It's a love test. Everybody that loves will give. Anybody who doesn't love will find a reason not to give. If a man loves his wife, he doesn't need an excuse to give. He's going out on the way. He sees a small something. He buys it. He comes back. He says, honey, I, I just I saw this on the road. Why did you buy it? I don't even need it. He said, oh, I thought you would like it. That's how men, men, am I right? I, I'm seeing all the men here. I know gateway men. Gateway men, am I telling the truth here? I know gateway men. That's how we behave. Amen? That's how we do. You call your wife and say, how are you doing? Uh, is there anything you need? You are not hearing me. <laughs> because love always gives. Love gives. Somebody say give. You test the sincerity of love by giving. Anybody that says loves you. Remember the people that love us who disappeared before the 14th of February. And reappeared on the 17th. You know. You are not hearing me. Uh, are you with me? You know, I, sometimes I, I watch some of these uh, funny things and all that. There's one man that arranged with his friend and all of that. On the 13th of February, while he was going with his uh, uh, girlfriend, and then VVV police came and then stopped them and then uh, handcuffed him, put in the back of the vehicle, and then they sent the girl away. The girl, he said, where are you people taking him to? Where are you people taking him to? They said, shut up. And they took him away. I went and put him in a hotel. <laughs> so he can escape the gear for tomorrow, 14th. Because she has been asking for money, asking for what he is going to buy. By the 16th, he came back. He said, Those people tortured me. He took my phone. <laughs> they took my phone. They took every. I couldn't call anybody. He said, Which station? I went to this station. They said, He's not there. I went to this one. He said, My dear, he. Lift up your hand. May you be surrounded by people that truly love you. Amen. And what does the Bible say in First Psalm, in First Corinthians two verse nine? It says, "Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, what God has prepared for them that do what love Him." Now, how do you test the love? First Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter eight, eight and nine. It says, "Giving we test the sincerity of love." Somebody say sincerity. When you see a Christian who doesn't pay tight, there's something he is saying. Because the test of the 10% is you testing God and God testing you. God tests whether you look at him as your source. And you are testing that God is faithful to supply. If you help me, say yes. So if God is not your source, giving 10% will be a battle. You will hear it, you will argue it, you will fight it, and you will just ignore it. When God is your source, 
me who it is because this God is where I am drawing from. Are you with me? Anybody that cannot give their tithe is saying to God, I can't fully trust you with my life and resources. I can't trust you with my life and resources. You say, how does tithe deal with life? Because what you use to make money is your life. You wake up in the morning, you go to work, you work from money to life. What do you do? You exchange your many hours to get that cash. So every cash you have is your life you exchange. So when you give to God, you are giving life. Am I talking to somebody here today? So when God, when you say, I can't trust tithe, you say, I can't trust with my life, I can't trust with my resources. Secondly, when a man says he can't tithe, he's saying that he has not overcome the hold of stinginess and covetousness. When a man is bound by stinginess and covetousness, even if he's a billionaire, he won't tithe. Come on, are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Anybody that can't tithe is saying he doesn't submit to God's system of financial stewardship. He doesn't submit to that. He's not a steward of God. So why will God keep giving you when you are stealing from him? The fourth thing, anyone that is not tithing is saying, I am not genuinely committed to the advancement of the church. Can you imagine a person that comes to Gateway and sits down here and sees all that is going on and we boldly eat his tithe? I can't, you know, when I came into this church in the morning, a young a brother walked up to me. He said, Pastor, I saw that, uh, you know, they were tiling the hall. He said, this is 500 naira. I want to be involved in the tiling. 500,000. I want to be involved in the tiling. I said, God bless you. I prayed for him. And he left. And not, it wasn't service. Nobody asked him. There's nobody announced that. But people come to church and they see what's going on. They say, I must be a part of it. Others are sitting down there at their watch and they think that you want to take blood from them by asking them to get involved. You walk in here as a, as a member of this church. You, you came here, we bought this massive land. Here, there, everywhere. And you didn't see us raise money. We started building. We didn't raise money. All our programs have gone on. We are on t radio, morning and evening, every day. For five, for, from Monday to Saturday. And we do altar of mercy live on radio. We have our life center network running. We are paying in dollars for that every month to keep it on, going on. 24-hour TV channel. We don't raise partners. We don't raise partners. We just keep carrying on. You come in here. You see this building is going on. The other one going on. Church planting is going on. All kinds of things is going on. We don't have a government giving us money. We don't have companies giving us money. You should know that the man standing here, one couple, they broke into 50 of your money. He doesn't touch. You can vow for me before God unless you're a fool. Am I talking to somebody here? I say boldly. I say without arrogance, unless you're a fool. You should know that. That this is not about scam. I told them, my children are going to school abroad. Ask them, if you find any trace that your church paid one naira for their school fees, come against me. What, why are you building? Is there any of my children that you see is running around here trying to hurry church? What do you think? We're trying to raise you. You come in here, you see all the things that are going on and you boldly eat your tight. Even a witch will go to heaven before. What do you mean? Can I talk to somebody here today? How can you say that? Am I talking to somebody here today? He says, I don't believe in tight. You better believe. When you walk in here, see all the equipment, all the salaries are being paid, projects are going on. Ah, things are hard. Hard for we are. I lift my hand over you. Every yoke of stinginess and darkness break in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> when people are not tightened, it's because they've not caught the revelation of the law of seed time and harvest. Brothers and sisters, as you live here today, with the teachings you have gotten, everywhere you go, you will see the blessing. Amen. I thought I would hear you are amen. amen. You will see increase. You will see empowerment. You will see turnaround. Since it's not you, can somebody else collect what I'm giving? In the morning, I try to answer three questions, three discussions that people have. The first one is say, when tithing is difficult. Uh, it's so difficult for me. I answered that in the first service. 
The second service I answered when tithing is not working. But I get my tithe and nothing is working. I try to deal with that in the second service. In this third service, when tithing is abused. When tithing is being abused. And hey, pastor, tithe is being abused. Well, not here. Are you with me? You did your first fruit. Ten cup of it, they broke into 50. I didn't collect. It's your first fruit. We are projects. We are building to do. We move. Are you with me? That's what. You see, eh? Integrity is not wearing turban. No, you didn't. Is anybody hearing me? It's a simple thing. It's a simple thing. I speak with boldness. You know, when I make mouth, it's not the way I talk. Pastors don't talk like that. Come on, are you hearing me? It's because of these things now. I was telling them in impact when we were in Calabar the other day. I said, if you can give. I just left. When we came out, I was telling them, I said, listen. He said, I've pastored impact all these years. Ask them. We have preached January. We have preached uh, in different cities. We have gone across Nigeria and outside. I have not collected one cobble honorarium from impact since impact began. I mentor the pastors I work with. One cobble honorarium I have not collected once. We are in Calabar. We finish. We are coming back. And all that. And I went with uh, six of my assistants and all that. We came back. Every time we travel, I will come back and I give each one of them their own honorarium from my pocket, whether I came back with money or not. I say, You take God bless you. 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 And the person giving them the money did not collect. Not from impact, from my pocket. You see, this thing, when you see me blessed, you get why. Keep being smart. You will find out that your smartness kept you where you are. Wake up in the morning, people call from anywhere in the world. I, you see, as I'm here now, I am the pastor of the whole world. There's no part of the world people don't call. There's no part. Are you hearing me? There are people in Pakistan, India, that say, that's my man of God. That's my man of God. Muslims, Christians, that's my man of God. I the chop life. I the chop life. Turn the fire, Satan. That's what you'll be. So when, when you wake up like this and all that, the money is just coming, it's because money should come. But when you sit down there and you are trying to be smart, how will you move forward? How will life bless you? Come on, are you with me? When is Titan abused? Titan is abused when it becomes a replacement for right living. Don't give tight and think that's a replacement for you to live right. Are you with me? You go to some churches. Praise the Lord. Is that there something burning over there? Check on it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you hear my voice, say yes. yes. You go to some churches, you see some elders and big businessmen who abuse the giving tithe. Eh? You are not hearing me. These people abuse the giving tithe. But in their giving of the tithe, they are committing evil in church. Have you seen that before? Ah? Huh? Pastor will not rebuke them, will not preach anything that will touch what they are doing so that it doesn't drive them they are the senior criminals of the church. And that's where they spoil things. You know what I'm talking about. That elder is in charge of seven widows. The other one is in charge of all the choir girls. He's our destiny helper. He's our destiny helper. You know this man, Naseta's junior brother. Or it's in church. That is tight in being abused. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. We don't abuse things. Praise the Lord. You can use it to replace right living. Tithing is abused when it becomes a personal reaction to the pastor. You go to some churches. When people are happy with their pastor, they pay tight. When they're angry with their pastor, they don't pay tight. 
Well, if you are pastor, the chop tight. Then you can abuse him. But if your pastor is ministering the gospel, whether you pay or you don't pay, his life will rise. No, you didn't hear me. His life will rise. One day I preached a message. I will never forget that. A one man, he's late now. He used to be a very wealthy man. He attended church. He has been coming to church at that time. And he approached me. He said, Pastor, if you keep talking like this, nobody will pay tight in your church. Then we are small. So I said to him, I said, sir, from today till you die, don't pay tight here. As the time I'm telling you, I said that to him. I didn't have a car. That's how far back it was. Say, from today till you die, don't pay tight here. When I said that, the fear of God gripped him. Because in his mind, he thought he was advising me well. If you keep preaching like this, people won't pay tight here. What do you mean? I'll preach the gospel. Listen, whenever I stand on this pulpit, I will say the truth. Whether it is against me or for me, it doesn't matter. My job is to preach the truth. Am I talking to somebody here today? That's my job. That's my job. That's my job. So that's what you should know. But no, don't pay tight. Just leave. I'm here today. He's gone to be with God. I lift my hand over it. On the authority of the one who died and rose again, you will not see shame. Amen. Tithing is abuse when it is done inconsistently and in multiple altars. You abuse it when you do it inconsistently and you do it in multiple altars. You come into church. Instead of dropping your tithe on God's table, you go and look at your favorite pastor and say, this is my tithe. And the person, because he's a thief, we collect too. You're not hearing me. Multiple altars. Multiple altars. That's all we do. You come to the house of God, you drop your tithe and you move on. Anybody want to give a seat, give him a seat. Are we clear? Oh, they didn't hear me. Are you clear with me? Because when things are not working, it get wild. If you had my voice, I hear you, sir. You are inconsistent. You start today. You stop tomorrow. You pay next month. You don't pay again. Please, for at least the next one year, have a contract with God. I'm going to be consistent. Come on, are you with me? You see, I told you some time ago that there's a saving I, was, I started doing some time ago. For many years, I never took one naira from that saving. Even till this evening, this afternoon, I'm not. You see, Every month I know, on the 22nd of the month, this is the amount I'm going to put into this service, no matter how small. This is my decision. Every 22nd of the month, I have not failed to put it. Not once. You see, there's a way you pattern your life. You are disciplined about life. Even Satan will respect you. You didn't hear me. Even Satan will respect you. When we're talking about George Jesus' foundation, how did I start saving the money for that? I told myself every month, this is the amount of money you pay into this account for that. He may not be able to buy a drug, but by the time you keep taking it, one year, two years, money is building, you can start from there. Others will help you move forward. I opened an account and started doing that. Everybody who has an unplanned listed, what gives you saving is not how much, it's how consistent. How consistent. How consistent. I told, I was sharing with the pastors, when I started traveling abroad, I go abroad. Everywhere I go to, if I spend the Sunday, I'm leaving that Sunday evening. I come back to New York. My wife said, what did you buy? I said, I left from church. In fact, I didn't even take my bath. From church, I went to the airport, flying from America, flying from anywhere. He said, but you should buy something for me. I'm your wife. I said, don't worry. I haven't even collected honorarium. He said, I'm not collecting honorarium. What? As I told the pastor, I put it in my account. So I didn't have money to buy anything for you. You didn't hear me. So after some time, while you call him and die, call him and bury him. What my wife would do is, as I'm about to travel, he said, can I have the number of the pastor and his wife so I can, so I can greet the wife? <laughs> so she will call the wife and tell the wife what to buy for, 
for her. And then when I arrive and all of that, uh, they should give it to me. I will give her the money. You, no, you didn't hear <laughs> me. So every time I arrive, they give me what she has ordered and all of that. And then from the honorary, my, the husband will now collect the money from me. I knew my wife was learning bad things. <laughs> Come on, are you with me? But you see, at that time, all those monies I was leaving in the account, it didn't matter anything. One day I told her, I said, I'm leaving it for this student to go to school. I said, that's all. One day they will need it. I didn't know dollar will, a problem will come. I didn't know things will come. You see, your ability to plan your life is your security for tomorrow. Have discipline. The same thing with your titan. The same thing with your titan. Every Saturday morning when I finish my quiet time, first thing is check my things and then transfer my tithe. If I can't do it in the morning because of that work, I do it in the evening, but I check it every morning. Have a way you handle life so it can work well for you. Are you hearing my voice here? Don't be consistent. Titan is abused when it's used as a bargaining tool for finances. All you do is, Father, you know, since I paid my tithe, money is not coming. Sir, tithe is not about money alone. When you pay your tithe, God gives you good thinking. God gives you good health. God gives you good relationship. God heals your family. God affects other things. God protects you. So you may not have cash, but other things happened out of the titan. So stop quarreling that when you pay tithe, you didn't see money return. If you help me, say yes. Titan is abused when it's not by faith. It's just a religious exercise. You just did it religiously, and you didn't see return. But brothers and sisters, make tight in a core part of your worship. Are you with me? Covenant it as a God first action. Pay it regularly where you are fed with the word of God. And keep a record as you do that. Pray prayers before you tithe. Tell God what you want. And when it's not working well, you can go to your man of God and say, please I lay hands on me. Things change when hands are laid. If you have my voice, say yes. I believe with these little points, I've convinced you. Uh, uh, that those of you who used to steal, should steal no more. Stand to your feet. You know, in the last almost two years, I've not done a teaching on Titan. Was it good I did this now? Yes. Lift up your two hands. Can I say, Father? Father? Please speak loud. I want to pray and we're almost out of time. Lift your voice and shout, Father? Father? You are a covenant keeper. You are a covenant keeper. Not a covenant breaker. Not a covenant breaker. I declare today. I declare today. It is working for me. It is working for me. My titan is working. My titan is working. My seed is working. My, is working. My covenant is working. My covenant is today, oh God, today, oh God, let the blessing, let the blessing be poured upon me. Poured upon Open me. your mouth and pray. <laughs> Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. You are Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. You never believe me. You say that you won't forsake me. You walk beside me, and that is all that Amen. I hear your amen. amen. There are some of you that devourers have been attacking for a long time. Lift up your hand. I say every devourer after, after my life, my business, my, business, my, career, my career, my family, my, family, my, money, my money, devourer, devourer fire, fire upon your mother. You never leave me. You say that you won't forsake me. That you won't be sorry. And that is all that matters.
should come to you that is delaying, as your hands are lifted to God, I pull it into your hand. Before this month is over, let the blessing begin to look for you. Let the opportunity come to you. Let the contract be signed. Let the relationship be activated. Let the breakthrough be released. In the name of Jesus. Every power saying no to your rising. I curse it now in the name of Jesus Christ. The devourers are cut away. Lift up the hand as you leave here now. Whatever you lay your hand upon shall prosper. Doors of visa has opened. Doors of contrast have opened. Everyone owing you the resources are released. Everywhere you turn, men will salute you and give to you. You will see help like never before. Before I step out, there may be one person or two or ten or hundred that are not yet giving their lives to Jesus. God resists proud people. Please don't sit down now. Don't sit down. There's something called respect for the presence of God. Don't. God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Everywhere you are, if you need to make your way right with God, lay your right hand on your chest and pray with me and say, Jesus, I know you are the son of God. You died for me. You rose from the dead. Come take over my life and make me new. Amen. Every one of you that prayed that, pray that prayer, please carry your bag and Bible in humility. Arrogant people don't go to God. Come to the altar. I'm waiting for you. While they're coming, every other person stretch your hand toward me. You pray the prayer of salvation or restoration. Come to the altar first. Come, I'm waiting. Everybody stretch your hand toward me. I cover your family with the blood of Jesus. This month we have prayed over finances. Any member of your family whose business is not doing well, who is a source of concern within and outside Nigeria, before June is over, you will hear a story that their life has changed. You will hear that their careers have changed. You will hear that help has located them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord show you help. The Lord show you mercy. Those on the altar, I bless you. I command destiny be activated. In Jesus name. Sit down everyone. Give the Lord a clap. Wow. Did you catch something? Huh? Did you catch something? Glory to God in the highest. We are closing in a few minutes. I believe you are ready for your tithing. Those of you who have been stealing from God a long time, now where you are, calculate all your owing. And then take a percentage of this and show it to God as a seed of mercy right now. The account numbers are where you are. If you want to pay with an ATM card, go to a bank over there. There's a POS system. And if you are giving your tithe, even if you didn't plan to, but right now you are convinced in your heart, I need to begin this practice. Start today, not tomorrow. Everybody paying your tithe, come to the table of the Lord immediately. Move now. Move fast. While they're coming, every other person lift up your offerings to the Lord. Higher than your head. When I say you can transfer, there is something God looks at a man and says, this man has a hardened heart. Don't have a hardened heart. You can do it now. Lift it up to the Lord. Almighty God, I pray for these men and women. Lord, by this now, every one of them living a peaceless life, let peace return. Amen. I pray, Father God, that their health be restored. Amen. I pray that their homes will experience the touch of God. Amen. I pray that their relationships will come alive. I pray that delays and denial break in the name of Jesus. I pray that they will see help in every area. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Shout Amen. Wow! Peniel is this week. Oh. Somebody give the Lord a shout in the house.
You will be there. There's a young man here now that the wife is coming from Rumah Hollow Church. He doesn't know, but he will see her in Penny. There's a girl here who has been praying for a young man to locate her, and the young man is coming from Yenegua. They are not hearing me. When you see him, you will know. I declare over you, as we gather business connections, we come. So please, Wednesday morning, this is the only program, general program of the church that we do morning and evening. When we do other ones, it's workers meeting and all that. But I want you to know, you need Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 9 a.m. is morning, 5 p.m. is evening. We have a beautiful time in God's presence. And please don't forget, people, are you hearing me? Saturday morning, there's no meeting, but Saturday night is a chop live session. That's when you see how crazy we are. I can't hear your amen. amen. And that's when there will be a raffle draw too. Give the Lord a better clap offering. Please be there. Amen. Invite your friends. All through the week, the altar of mercy continues. Please, every one of you that have not gotten your penial t-shirt, please go get one and let's use it for the advertisement and for the meetings in the morning. Now, in April, please hear me as I close. In April, we are going to be celebrating the gifts of our members every Wednesday. As we are teaching you, we want to do something to uplift the atmosphere for them. There are some of our members that are skit makers and movie makers. There are some of our members that are music makers. There are some of our members that are comedy gifts and all of that. First, on, first Wednesday, we come, we spend about 45 minutes, play their skits and all of that. Enjoy it, comedy skits, whatever skits they are, from Unipop, from here, from everywhere. Are you with me? Then after that, I'll take a choir song and then I will minister in the word. Then we'll do that the next week for the music people. They will take different tones. This one will sing, the other one will sing and all of that. We finish. Third week, we'll do comedians and all that. After about 45 minutes and all that, this one will take turn, we do that. I, because, you see, when they stand here, I'm sure, you know, people are watching us from different parts of the world. We want to project their face also. They are part of our house. Should we promote them? And also, it will make fun for our meetings and all that. So, please plan to be around every Wednesday and then plan to experience a word from God. The last Wednesday, we pick the standouts among them and then we use that to minister to ourselves. So, please don't miss out on that. Glory to God in the highest. I say glory to God in the highest. I think that uh, that's all. The street trader draw, as I step out to a pulpit, uh, the raisin pastor or whoever is uh, there. Is raisin pastor around? Okay, the, whoever is in charge of that can quickly do that. Today is your first day coming to Gateway. If there's anything I'm forgetting, please remind me. First day in Gateway. Carry your bag and Bible. Come, I want to lay a hand of blessing upon you. I lay the blessing of God upon you. You will rise and keep rising. Please follow this person. Come closer. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Your destiny rise and keep rising. In the name of Jesus. Come, 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 come. Thank you for being in our test service today. I bless you. You will not struggle in life. In the name of Jesus. I lift you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. You will not struggle in life. In the name of Jesus. Come closer. You won't struggle in life. The help of God be your portion. In the precious name of Jesus. I bless you. Come closer. This way, this way. I bless you. Make sure you didn't leave anything in your chair. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Come closer. I bless you. I bless you. Celebrate them for me. I bless you. I bless you. Those of them for the something, if they go out there, please bring them back. I bless you. Come closer. I bless you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a better clap of it.
I am sure you know that this week you will have a terrible experience of the supernatural. Everything will work for you. I didn't hear your amen. The kind of favor you have never seen must happen between now and Friday. By Good Friday, you will have a testimony to shout. When I hear your amen, your own is done. Organized by Gateway International Church. Please step up to the front right now. Can we put our hands together for them? Be sure you have your ticket. You were given a ticket which is going to be cross checked right now to enable you grab your cash prize. Please, I need someone to help me make the confirmations to be sure that what they have is actually the ticket we gave them. Uh, it may interest you to know that uh, the market women received. 5,000 5, Naira free gift as the raffle was being done at the market. These are the ones that are going to be more empowered with the prizes of 50,000 Naira, 70,000 Naira, and 30,000 Naira respectively. So please help me confirm their tickets. You get them. Okay, please, can you bring forward the tickets? Who is... Are you checking it? Are you checking the tickets? Make the tickets available right now, please. Yeah, just hang on. Okay, please go ahead and pick. Remember, immediately after this, U40 service kicks off immediately. Don't go nowhere. If you know you are ever interested in jackpying, if you know anybody who is planning to jackpot, if anybody is encouraging you or discouraging you from jackpying, please, you have to stay back because our lead pastor will be elucidating a whole lot of information you need to have at the tip of your fingers as you go to Canada, UK, USA. Who wants to go to America? <laughs> Just stay back for our service now. All right. Has it been confirmed? Can we have the lucky winner of 30,000 Naira disclosed? Okay, you're still picking. <laughs> Please open it as you pick up. Okay. Don't open yet, please. Just hold on. Have you picked? Have you all picked? I just feel like adding something extra for someone to win in the next service. Should I? I should. I will take permission from the lead pastor. <laughs> all right. I can see the tension on some faces here. I'm going to be 70,000 Naira richer. <laughs> okay. Can we now begin to unfold the tickets in your hand? If you are the winner of 30,000 Naira, can I see you raise your hand up? Wow. Mama is the winner of 30,000 Naira. You are the winner of which amount? 70,000 Naira is also disclosed. Who is the winner of 50,000 Naira? Wow. Jam your hands together for these three. Please come to the middle. Come to the middle. Daddy, just say a word of prayer for them briefly as they are. Others, we want to say a big thank you for participating. How many? Please come over. Come over. We want to say a very big thank you for participating. Please, as you go back to the markets, share the good news with your neighbors, okay? When next we come, make sure that you are a part of what we are doing. Go ahead. Have you taken? Okay, the rest, please, we can go back. Thank you for participating. God bless you. Please share the good news to your neighbors. And, yeah, okay. The winner of 30,000 Naira, please make the presentation, sir. We are presenting that on behalf of the lead pastor to you. Please go ahead. That is the winner of 30,000. And then this is 50,000. Who is the winner of 50? Please come closer to Pastor Nat. 
Oh my God, 50,000 Naira richer. You know what that means in this economy? The winner of 70,000 Naira cash prize. Get closer, and this is presented to you on behalf of the lead pastor of Gateway International Church, Pastor George Izuwa. Go and do bigger business in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. You for this service begins now.